Well, happy Saturday morning. You know what that means for me. Another day of game hunting. The last two weeks, I've come up almost completely dry. The only thing that I've gotten, weekends, I should mention. Uh, I've gotten Time Crisis 2 and 3 at a basically a last ditch thrift store. Um, other than that, I haven't found anything for two weekends in a row, so I'm hoping to break that streak today. Here we go. It's Goodwill! Alright, so that one was a bust. They had Lego Star Wars for PlayStation 2 for four bucks. And I'm definitely not a Lego whatever guy, you know, Indiana Jones or Batman or any of that stuff. I really don't like those games. I got the first Lego Star Wars when it first came out, and uh, I was extremely disappointed. So, um, yeah, I don't buy those games. Kind of wanted, I do like Star Wars a lot, though. Kind of wanted it just for that. I think it was uh, the Lego Star Wars original trilogy, actually. Um, anyway, that was pretty much it. Uh, this place is pretty much hit or miss, and uh, I haven't found anything here in a while, actually, now that I come to think about it. Um, anything decent, I should say. But, you know, I've found Sega Saturn games in there before. Um, so I got my $5 PlayStation 2 that actually works. <laughs> it's an awesome PS2 fat just had to clean it up but anyway off to the next one so they got some decent shit today I've never seen one of these before. It's kind of cool looking. But at $5 now. Oh, shit. Well, on a high note, the losing streak is over. Uh, I didn't get anything phenomenal there, but I did get a few decent games that I've wanted for a little bit. A um, couple games that I missed out on that I did want Shinobi for PlayStation 2. No manual, six bucks. Uh, the top of the disc was littered with uh, rental stickers. The actual bottom side of the disc was fine, but for six dollars, I want a better copy than that, so I can wait. Uh, Dead to Rights, same thing for the Xbox, um, and I think there was one more. I don't remember what it was, but obviously, it's not important if I don't remember what it was. So, anyway, off to the next one. Nothing spectacular, but something a little uh, obscure. Um, I'll show you guys when I get back to the house. Okay. In keeping with the uh, the pattern, as normal, Thrift Town, Indoor Flea Market, and then from there, I'm not really sure. Maybe home, I don't know. We'll see. This thing has been here forever. Forever.
Alright, so I'm like super annoyed because I sat here and talked for like 25 minutes and uh, the damn camera stopped at like 30 seconds so I'm going to have to do this all again and this is like the third time so <sighs> let me go through everything that I got today and I'm going to do this super fast because like I said I've already done this like twice already so uh, stupid camera alright zip through it today I got uh, this Tiger R Zone from one of the savers that I stopped at uh, this was $2.99 didn't come with any games um, I noticed that I think there's a reflective piece right here that is supposed to be the actual viewing point and that's missing so it's a little bit upsetting but you know whatever it's probably gonna be just room decoration anyway um, Pete Dorr did uh, a little bit of a review on on this recently he picked one up on eBay for relatively cheap and he kinda goes into the history of the, of the system and all that so um, go ahead and check out his videos and, and take a look at this or, or just go ahead and do some research on this because this is it's kind of an interesting system um, the best thing I can compare it to is a really shitty Virtual Boy, which tells you how shitty this is because the Virtual Boy is shitty. So, there's that. 299. Out of another Savers. Copy, copy of Medieval 2 for PlayStation 1 and a copy of Pandemonium for PlayStation 1. Um, 299 piece. They're both complete. This one is just riddled with stickers. Looks like crap. So, I'm going to have to switch the case on really both of these because they're all jacked up. Also, last thing that I got, I didn't really get a whole lot uh, from the thrifts and the flea market today, which is, you know, it's fine. Uh, I got a copy of the November of 1983 Joystick Magazine. This was 31 cents, actually. Very cool to have that. Um, there's a review for the Texas Chainsaw Massacre for the Atari 2600 uh, Othello, which is a horrible game. There's a Dragon's Lair walkthrough, which is just really cool it's gonna be kinda of nice to sit here and just read through you know old video game stuff uh, that's definitely before my time as far as video games are concerned but still very cool let me see something alright still record that's good what I've decided to do was consolidate the uh, midweek pickup videos and the weekend game hunting live slash pickup video because it doesn't make any sense to do two per week especially because I'm not really finding a whole lot on the weekends anymore so I'm kind of mashing them all together so I'm going to show you guys what I got earlier this week I got quite a bit of stuff nothing super exciting um, but it's still a lot of stuff that I kind of find interesting so here we go make this really quick um, oh shit before I do that also earlier today uh, along with Medieval 2 uh, I got a complete copy of Sylphid this is the Lost Planet it's a shoot 'em up looks very cool $5.99 kind of a lot but it looks very good. I actually really want to play that game. Then I also got a copy of Tomb Raider, the Angel of Darkness, PlayStation 2, $6. Um, this was the last Tomb Raider game that I needed to have all of them. So um, I got it. I haven't been able to find a decent copy uh, in, in a long, long time. But I actually had this when it first came out. Uh, it was an awful, awful game. I hated the way that it looked. I hated the way that it controlled. So... Um, this was actually one of the last games that I traded into GameStop or EB or whatever. Um, I got like, obviously, you know, pretty much the same way it is now where you buy it for 50 bucks and then you get like $20 of credit. So, um, yeah, I, I remember being very upset by the trade value back then. So that was when I actually stopped trading in games and started, you know, even if they were awful, I kept them. Kind of set me up for where I am right now where I have a ton of games so even if I don't like them you know I, I just I hang on to them so anyway earlier in the week I got a copy of Billy Hatcher and the giant egg for the GameCube this was four bucks this is complete um, don't really know a whole lot about this game I do know it's from Sega and it's on GameCube and uh, it was cheap so I went and got it alright so I hit uh, Savers I think on Wednesday which was the 30th of October uh, Halloween Eve, if you will. Uh, they had a ton of games there that day, which was just awesome because that's the same savers that I kind of complain about in some of the other videos because they never have anything. Well, lately they've had a lot of stuff, so that kind of just goes to show you, you know, if some place that you hit frequently doesn't have stuff, keep going because eventually you'll probably get something. In. So that was also a discount day, 
Everything that I got here was $2.99 plus like 10 or 20% off. I don't remember what the discount was, but this all wound up uh, accumulating to $18 total. So I got a copy, a complete copy of Wacky Races for the Nintendo Wii. Uh, it's a kart racing game, I think. Some sort of racing game. It actually looks kind of cool. I don't know. I'll try that out. I got a copy of Kirby's Air Ride for the GameCube. This manual uh, is missing, but, you know, whatever. Copy of Metroid Prime. Um, this copy actually has a Metroid Prime Echoes bonus disc. I didn't realize that this variation of it existed. I already have two copies. Um, the one copy that I do have in my collection, I'm going to probably go ahead and swap out for this one and just hang on to this. So, there's that. Pokemon Coliseum. Manual is missing. Uh, the disc, I think, is in pretty good shape, though. You can tell it's been played. Let me put it like that. I haven't tested any of this stuff out yet, but I'm sure this is going to work. This is trade bait. I hate Pokemon. Talked about that before. Okay, moving along. Uh, the Legend of Zelda Twilight Princess for the Nintendo Wii. It's complete. Got two copies of Super Mario Sunshine. One has a manual. The other one doesn't. Uh, the one that does not have a manual is a little bit rough. I'm going to have to get that one bucked. But uh, both of these are up for trade if anybody's interested. I went to a retro game store looking for something for my daughter. They wound up not having that, but I did get a bunch of other you know, random stuff for myself. Um, I don't really like going there very much because they overprice a lot of things like most most retro game stores do. Um, obviously, you know, they got employees to pay and all that stuff, but um, to give you an example of, of the kind of prices that they do have, uh, I think Super Mario Duck Hunt is like a $6 game there. Um, a Model 2 Sega Genesis, which in my personal opinion, uh, just because of the frequency at which I see it and because I know it, it doesn't sell or trade well, um, Model 2 Sega Genesis is $40 there with one controller. So, it's a lot. Anyway, I did happen to stop in there and I try to, you know, go through their, their racks and see if I can find something that maybe they mispriced or, you know, didn't quite price to where it should be. Um, the first thing I got, I have buyer's remorse on now, um, is I got Mario Preschool fun uh, Mario's early years preschool fun uh, this was eight dollars um, I know that there is one I think it's on the Super Nintendo that's relatively uncommon uh, this is not that one so I regret getting that one I mean I, I regret spending eight dollars on that one but you know it is what it is you win some you lose some whatever I got a copy of Pinocchio for four dollars and this game belonged to Reed who left his phone number on there I should call him and say hey I got your game son Anyway, moving along. Cool World, Super Nintendo, three bucks. Um, and also a copy of WCW Super Brawl for three dollars. <coughs> I don't remember if I actually played this game or not, but I do remember looking in the magazines uh, back when I was a kid and seeing ads for this all the time. And I, I remember this looking pretty cool, so I'm gonna have to try this out and, and uh, see how it is. Uh, a game that I found to be relatively uncommon as far as sports games are concerned is uh, NBA 2K2 for the Dreamcast. I rented this back in the day. Uh, I really love the 2K series on, on the Dreamcast and it's what really made me cross over from NBA Live. Um, I was really kind of just fed up. I'm a huge, first of all, I'm a huge basketball fan and basketball video game fan. Uh, the NBA Live series started going really stale around NBA Live 2000-ish. Uh, so playing NBA 2K1 for the first time just kind of blew my mind. I was a huge fan of that. I, I only rented 2K2. I never actually owned it. I'm glad to actually have this in my collection now. This was 99 cents. And I also got a copy of Knight's Journey into Dreams on the Wii. This was $1.99. It's complete. This is something I saw at GameStop and I was pretty interested in it. Uh, it was like 3 or $4 or something like that. Um, but I couldn't find a copy that had a manual. So I was passed on it. And I hate shopping at GameStop regardless. So I'm actually kind of glad to have this and for a relatively cheap price too. Alright, cycling back uh, later, earlier in the week. Um, you'll see that earlier in the video I had, uh, at one of the savers I shot a little bit of video where there was a stack of Super Nintendo games. They had two copies of Mario Paint and uh, I think it was Lunar Pool and uh, what was the other one? Uh, Clue. Uh, they were $2.99 each. Those games suck. 
Yesterday I went in and I saw the stack initially and I picked up two games. First game I got was Time Slip for the Super Nintendo. And the reason I got this is I have absolutely no idea what it is. Uh, never heard of it, never played it. It was $2.99 and a copy of Demon Sword for the Nintendo. Um, earlier this week, cycling way, way back, I got I got a complete Nintendo 64 with the jumper pack inside. Came with two first party controllers. One of these was actually really rough. Uh, I was able to do a fix on it. And uh, there's a guy who goes by uh, Memories in 8 bit. He has an awesome tutorial. I'm going to go ahead and put that down in the description. Uh, you guys check it out if, if you have jacked up Nintendo 64 sticks. His, uh, his fix actually works really well if you do it properly. So I, I highly recommend his channel and that tutorial in general. He has a couple other things on there. Um, Game Boy related fixes, so I, I would highly recommend checking that uh, that channel out. That uh, Nintendo 64 came with a copy of South Park and a third party Rumble Pack, 20 bucks, not too bad. That same day, I also got a PlayStation uh, fighting stick. Uh, the stick is a little bit loose, but it's not too bad. Uh, the buttons don't have a great response to them. Uh, it's got some good weight to it, but I did not have a PlayStation uh, fighting stick at all. This was 3 or $4, I don't remember which one, but I didn't think that was too bad of a deal. Prior to that, I think this was Monday, I picked up a complete copy of Assassin's Creed for the PlayStation 3. This was 4 bucks at Goodwill. Um, definitely happy to see that Goodwill is starting to get uh, 360 games and PlayStation 3 games and selling it for like 3 or 4 bucks, which is very cool. The same day that I got the Nintendo 64, I also got a copy of Pokemon Stadium for $1.50. This is up for trade. And a copy of Zelda Ocarina of Time. This is the gold uh, cartridge. I think this was a limited edition or something like that, but uh, I'm not a big N64 guy at all. Um, I do happen to have two other copies of this, so I'm going to go ahead and swap this one out for the other gray cart that I have. So I've got two copies of uh, Ocarina of Time up for trade or sale or whatever. So. Um, if you guys see anything that you like, you know, make sure that you hit me up on Facebook or send me a message on YouTube or whatever and let me know you're interested. If I still have it, I'm definitely into working out trades and stuff. Um, I mean, that's what I'm doing these videos for, is to kind of get involved with the community and all that stuff. So, you know, let me know. Um, the last thing that I got, and this was earlier in the week, and I'm sorry I'm just kind of like all scattered all over the place, but I've done this video like two or three times and the damn camera's giving me all kinds of trouble. So, I'm kind of zipping through it in no particular order. Uh, I got a Commodore 64 plug and play. This is the C64 by Mammoth Toys. Uh, I ha I've had two of these in the past. I still have one hung up on my uh, shelf over there as uh, decoration. I know that these are, are somewhat sought after. Uh, they're very hackable and very moddable. Um, I don't know how to do any of that stuff myself. I don't really care to do any of that stuff myself, but there are folks who do. Um, when I sold one of these last, uh, I think I bought it for like 3 bucks, and I sold it for 12 or $13 with $3 shipping or whatever. Uh, and I looked this up on eBay, and that was, that was a while ago. I looked this up on eBay while I was at the thrift store, and apparently these things are selling for like $30, $35 now. So I was definitely going to go ahead and grab this and, and just try to flip it. But uh, I'll throw it up on eBay for like 20 bucks and see what happens. I'll let people fight over if they want to, but, so anyway, if you guys see any of these in the uh, thrift stores or whatever, you can get them real cheap, you can go ahead and flip them on eBay for a decent amount of money. I don't think they're all that great, I mean, just as far as a plug and play is concerned, they're not bad, it's not a bad one, by any means, um, the controls are pretty decent, but I'm just really surprised that they're going for that much. Um, I think that's it, so... Sorry I kind of rushed through this, but uh, like I said, I, I've, I've done this a couple times already, so I'm just trying to get it over with and, and get it out. Um, there's going to be a bit of a delay between the time that I actually shoot this and put it up, so if I say that something's for trade, it might not be available by the time you guys see it, but please feel absolutely free to hit me up and, and let me know if you're interested in something that I pick up that I say I'm, I'm just kind of getting for a trade. So, uh, to all my latest subscribers, uh, all the folks who commented and, and uh, sent me messages and whatnot. Thank you very much. I really appreciate it. I think I've subscribed to most of you guys already by now. Um, I appreciate you guys watching and, and sticking with me through this and, and, and all that fun stuff. So uh, I will catch you guys next time. Later.